I wouldn't know anything else. Yeah. I was an inter one last year, so we were all about being uh, on social media and showing what we were doing the entire time. Now it's really different with inter ten, which has no connection to anything. But isn't like there that. a conflict between the sort of the the networking possibilities that are given by things like Facebook? Mm. Um, um, and it's counter, which is the sort of the world of the tutor, isn't it? But it's interesting because I found that architecture students usually use social media less than other students in other yes. universities. Mm. So, and a lot of them are more thinking about going into a professional, um, a professional kind of part of the internet where they build up a website to advertise their work rather than posting yes. it on a blog only. So I don't know, maybe we're just the generation that are moving from the old habits. And do you to think you should be able to move from unit to unit? Why can't you do your first term with Valentin and the next term I actually with was thinking PVA about that. I would and love then that. not have a tutor at all? I would love that, to be honest. It's just that it's a bit um, messy in the end to do that, just because of the time. What is, what's the matter with mess? It's not the matter, it's mm -hmm. not, my problem isn't the mess, but it's other people's problem. My, my mess is other people's problems, yes. basically, in the end. So, uh, there's a lot of people from my old unit that are having problems getting jobs for the year out, which is mandatory, unfortunately. But if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't see any problem with just moving around. I would actually w like... What does that stop you getting a job? I don't know. Uh, it's not stopping I'm getting not a job, it's just I'm that... I'm just trying to explore... Yeah, of course. Um, um, uh, I remember someone saying it might be a nice idea if you have a unit which has both intermediate students in and the pro students. Now that bit is quite it's difficult, difficult for a tutor because you're struggling yeah. in two Different uh, um, assessment regimes. Uh, but nevertheless home unit for the entire year, but you being able to go to everyone else as well if you want a tutorial in other places. Yeah. So you have a kind of mothership. Mothership and then yeah. you can navigate and, and then you which helps you navigate different issues around the school. Yeah, that could be interesting. Because it's always a problem in the end who is sort of responsible for you. Mm. Now, at a lot of universities now, I don't know if it still pertains, you used to have a tutor who you would be doing your work with and then you had a personal tutor yeah, who you would perhaps twice. see only twice a year, mm. who would be somebody who kind of um, would take care of the students. But that, that could be an interesting model, I think, yeah. It would be but it would be demand a certain flexibility from tutors as well, exactly. wouldn't it? You see, I've known tutors who won't let students read certain books because it says they'll pollute their minds or but don't. How, they can, don't how can like they control this. it anyway? Like, there's no way of controlling that. So. No. I don't know, maybe if the student wants to read it, then they read it. If they're so influential that they listen to what the tutor yeah. says one to one, then it's their own problem. Yes. So. Well, how, the thing is, these, it's a sort of contradict, you want to have an unexpected, so you would have to construct this, wouldn't you? Because yes. it wouldn't be unexpected to you. It wouldn't be you. unexpected to like me. Like if you decide you're going to walk through the AA with uh, a goat, for instance, <laughs> and then <laughs> you take that it into the bar and sit down, and then have a conversation about Painting on the goat. goats or... Uh, agriculture and architecture, but you would have to run the goat, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess you, you would mean, set up a you framework. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. You would set, set up a framework and people would just, in the end, come together and do it at one mm. point whatsoever. I, I don't know what the framework could be, but... Why do you need framework? N I don't really need a framework, mm. it's just that I guess it would be easier to get together with people if they knew what the outcome is in a way, but mm. I, I really don't know, to be honest. It's, it's one of those well, vague things that you... Say to Mark uh, or Eddie, you'd say, well, I want you to construct an accident that will promote a conversation about... Do you know, do you know Paul Davis? Do you know Paul? He used to teach around here. Mm. 
He wrote a book about optical fame. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he did a really, one of his students did a really nice project. It was about office space. Uh, and the, the drawing I remember, mo there was little things like you're talking about. It was design of the entrance to a lift so that you would have a high chance of catching your shoe in it. And then you would fall into the arms, theoretically, who, uh, uh, whoever was already in the lift. And uh, that was nice, but it was also a very nice drawing, really beautiful sort of full half full size detail with a shoe and stuff, really good. Yes, there is. Mm. is that expecting, the sort of thing you mean? Yes, not? but expecting that people are in the lift is a bit risky, but no, it might, might be an interesting be. Well, outcome. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's might the not idea. Be. Yes, that, if you bring the goat in the bar, people might, might, might ask shit you everywhere. People. <laughs> mm. Cause havoc. Someone, someone made a film years ago, of the, I think she's a French artist, and she found out that in the south of France, there have been a lot of um, road accidents, people killed dead or dead from dangerous driving dead or dead. And she found out that instead of doing a poster campaign, they decided to stage a car crash um, in this village. No, no, just stage a really bad car crash with actors and stuff. But she found out beforehand, so she said, can I film it? So she set up all these cameras and filmed this car crash, which you don't usually do. No. So she had cameras everywhere. And, and she made this piece of work about this accident, this accident, which wasn't an accident. Quite an interesting film, very odd. And also, um, Bruce McLean, who, well, it used to be when everybody used to do lectures with these carousel mm. slides, you know, they, they always used to jam all the time, and then the technology wouldn't work. And he set up a lecture for everything to go wrong. So he'd set things to jam and the lights to go out and everything. And he said it's the only lecture he ever did where everything went right. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody thought it was a really good lecture. It's a great genre of film, slapstick comedy, where the accidents in, in the space of a film and a script are so beautifully choreographed that they cascade one accident after the other. After the yeah. other. And you, you just... I just adore those things. And the fact that they're written and still feel compelling as create, creative accidents is so, so just, it's just a joy. Everyone's tried to kind of recreate the AA stairwell, like even the new Bartlett has this exaggerated yes. stair element where accidents are supposed to happen and people are meant to find each other or bump into each other. But again, it's a kind of, when you design it, when you force it, it yeah. Yeah, or or it has a kind of slapstick problem, you know. How do you how do you devise an accident like the cameras for the? Yeah, there is a there is a comedian. It's a French guy, silent sort of comic thing, and he's always doing something. He keeps getting his he keeps getting his thumbs caught in the buttonholes of his jacket as he's trying to do stuff. Or whatever. And and it's these things that happen that you, you wouldn't think happen. But I've noticed now and again when I'm walking around the house, this bit will catch in the door handle or something. Yeah. And you think, how, how did that happen? Or something, or you'll get something stuck in your buttonhole. You think, hey, you, you couldn't plan that. But it happens, and the, the actual chances of those coordinates happening are so slim. Uh, of course, this guy has a whole act about these things happening. It must be really well worked out. Is it an American thing? or did, When I say Rube Goldberg uh, <laughs> image, do you know, it, it these amazing like a cartoon of accident after accident. This hits that, that hits that, oh, spiral, true. spiral, spiral, an yeah, egg yeah. falls here, this this kind of mm. Dada meets cartoon. But those, yeah, those moments of how could it happen. Of the zillion yeah. possibilities of the cuff in the designer handle while you're trying to get the alarm. Yeah. All there. And that's a bit like the fish, is it fish thing vice? Did the, uh, the the way of things or the run of things, was it? Yeah. Like, have you ever seen that? No. Uh, they must have it in the library. In the, in the they filmed this con consecutive accident thing of a, a candle will burn through a piece of string and then that falls down and then it hits a brick and then a tire goes. But it goes on for something like 70 minutes. Have you seen it, David? No. I've seen it. Oh, you love it. Yeah. But yeah, that's it, especially on Vice that did it. But they did it in the same studio all the time, so they could do a sort of minute-long version and then just keep it running the whole time. They just kept editing it together. But do you think somehow they can be designed to actually 
in, interfere with the AA's some of its sort of routines in order that one sees them a bit more clearly. Mm -hmm. I think it could, to be honest, because nothing really. So they goes go beyond wrong just being, oh, that was interesting. They actually say to become a critique of something or try to. It doesn't necessarily have to become a critique, but it could break up your schedule a bit more, you know what I mean? Mm. In, in the sense that it doesn't have to say that it's bad to be in a routine. If you like it, then it's good for you. Or if you don't, then you have that moment of escape. Uh, meet up. Um, I don't know, like, everything is very well planned. It's a very dynamic school. It's very up and down going all the time. There's nothing is really at a level in the school, especially now that we've done this terrace competition. Every little floor in the school is at a different height. And how can you make it like, aware of those moments would be interesting. Yes, I, I suppose there'll be most, most people think, oh, it's functioning perfectly well, thank you very much, and we're going to give degrees soon, and that'll guarantee its future. But, it, if, but it's strange that it has a system which is over 50 years old, doesn't it? And you look at what, what's happened around it, uh, whether it's banks or whatever, a huge amount of change, and yet has managed to remain the same. But, what you would argue it's a point of stasis in a chaotic world, perhaps I don't know. Joseph Hoffman had a theory called accidentism. Mm -hmm. He was, I think he was railing against the, what had become a kind of modernist orthodoxy about how you could um, handle That's interior true. design. So Hoffman decided, you didn't, you didn't have to kind of have a Mies van der Rohe uh, strip down everything authored by one hand interior. You could have stuff, and the stuff could be your favorite things, not all of a kind. And accidentism was this notion if you take one thing you hold as beautiful mm -hmm. and you put it next to another thing you hold as beautiful, they don't have to be simpatico, but somehow together they amplify beauty. They're more than some of their parts. Yes. So that's an accident that had a kind of for Hoffman, he was always going on, and he started designing textiles. It was jarring, visually jarring, but it was a tonic to all the kind of cool, calm, and collected uh, uh, milieu. And he was a part of, you know, he was a family member of um, the Werkbund and all this. I mean, he was a modernist, but he was getting bored out of his mind and wanted to shake it up a bit. So, accident. Yeah, he wrote about it, he wrote a book about it, which was recently translated and is in our. Now. Maybe sh we should have a look at that. I'll have a look at that. Yeah. Try and find it. Mm. I don't have my card with me. <laughs> it's with Sensi, surprisingly. Discuss it with Valentin. Yeah. No, it definitely it's been a theme that I was exploring in the foundation. I was going to. Because uh, he's interested in this word cut, isn't yeah. he? Mm. So, yeah, you get a lot of accidents happen when you make cuts into things, don't you? Unexpected outcomes. Ask him what he would cut in the AA. What he would cut, or mm. what he would cut? He's cut a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I will. Um. I don't know. But I mean, what do people think? It, 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 I keep saying that nobody ever says to me, "Look, everything's perfectly all right. It can go on like this perfectly well, probably forever." You know? Why do you think it's nobody's ever tinkered with it? I mean, there was a time when students used to, for instance, where there were units that didn't have a tutor, mm -hmm. that were self-organising. Uh, there was another one which it was just, where well, there were just women. It was a women's unit who wanted to do it. Um, and they, sort of, they don't last very long, but it doesn't seem to me to be the point with it. Because self-organising groups in the end always fall out, don't they? No, what's your name? Oh, I'm Lube. Lube, have you signed in? No, I haven't. No. What, what unit are you in? I'm in 14. In the 14? Yes. Who's, who's that? Who's 14? It's uh, the Italians, Per Vittorio and Maria. Oh, really? Oh, oh. I guess on the point of self-organizing units, it's just that once you join the A, you're getting thrown into the system that's already 
established itself that you don't really start? To yes, I mean, it was, of course, was in there where there weren't so many units, there weren't so many students. And also, the, the is quite a, an extraordinary place. Mm. It's quite open to begin with. Mm. Well, therefore, it's interesting that it is asking these questions. Do you think they're worth asking, or do you think just I'm just a sort of grumpy old man, sort of? <laughs> uh, I don't mind we what have it. we have to ask them, Peter, mm. yes. because they have been shut down elsewhere. Yeah, I yeah. also think. I, I think was reading really a duty at the AA to, to ask them, you see. The, the conversation wouldn't happen at Oxford Brooks. It wouldn't even happen down the road. It's, yeah. it's scary. Mm. Where the bar Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know. I think I was looking at John Somerson's little history of the AA, and he's mm. talking about the founding of it. There's lots of mythic stories. But the one thing I didn't know is there's this argument in the newspaper, students writing in saying, I'm not getting anything out of my article pupillage. It's a very mm. meager education in an architect's office. Mm. I've gone down to Somerset House and tried to get something out of the kind of, you know, um, pro program of lectures on, art, on classicism. That's yeah. not doing it for me either. Mm. If you can't, if the state can't sort out a school, maybe the students can on their own. Then maybe we'll just band together and do it. Yeah. And the editors had held back on publishing these things and then decided, what the hell, let them do it. And then immediately put out, out there enough that other people started coming. That's a kind of social media of the newspaper and the editors, letters yes. to the editor. But I thought, that's still going strong, or that still should go strong. Mm. That sense, if, if we're not happy about something, I think the phrase was, the student said, if we just put our shoulder to the wheel, maybe yeah. we'll do it. Did someone, someone mentioned that in the, the meeting, maybe it was Ed Mott. Oh, that's a good bluff now. I know. Yeah. No, I, I, in the in the he did. in the scripts of last week uh, last week about our student our students even aware of a legacy that they leave or is it just their time for two years or four years or whatever that they're in the space or something like that you know so um, I, I think it's that's a lot to do with it about a legacy that you leave that you're actually concerned about what happens after yep. you're there okay. if you're only ever interested in when you're there. And what you get out of it is going to be very different. And it attracts different types of students, I think. To say I've been through something not pleasant, I want to affect change, not that it will help my situation, but help the next person. To take that time, mm. it's something you see going on quite often around here. Right. And that's, I mean, I think that goes back to David's point. But, but you have to keep reminding people that's what you do. And, and it's it's only through accidents and, by extension, problems, not all happy things, that, that you you keep that, that process ticking on. I don't know if that's called evolution or whatever, it doesn't matter, but they're sporadic, but there are these pinch points. I think Ed talked about these pinch points of the AA's history, and if we're at another pinch point or not, yes. yeah. that was his kind of open question at the end of his talk. Do you know about Blonde? Not too much. Did you see the poster, or did you, were you just passing? Um, I saw the poster, but I also saw um, I also saw the, um, uh, the original presentation on the opening day. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a very short introduction. So, but yeah, Jerry wasn't there that day, was he? No, he was. It, well, oh yeah, it's in, in cardboard. <laughs> in, in spirit. <laughs> what? Well, that's fourteen. We've got somebody else from. Yeah, I see. Josh was there, maybe. Oh, JG. Yes, Josh, of course, Josh In the, the higher echelons of the AA, do they ever discuss, oh, well, uh, should we return to a year system? Now that everybody else has decided to copy the AA, I don't. Are the virtues and disadvantages of the year system ever discussed? You know? Mark Cousins brings it up. Yes. Because if. Is, if Everyone's now copied the AA. Yeah. It's no longer a unique trait. Therefore, the pendulum swings. Mm. This is the no notion of beard peak or peak beard. If everyone has a beard on the street, yeah. the trend yeah. will become clean shaven that will now be in fashion. So, yes. it, so, yeah, there's that notion of it's not one above the other, but if it's all the same. 
But why are all units roughly the same size? That is a relatively modern innovation. You see, PVA has a massive uptake, doesn't he? Yeah. See, now in the past, he would have to take all of his first choices. Yeah, which kind of would make. Yes. You know, I remember like Peter Cook once would get like three quarters of the diploma school. Come but is it the fear of... And so why, why are they always the same size, do you know? I bet if you chart it, even from last year to this year, mm -hmm. they're more normative yeah. sizes. I yes. mean, there is... Is it, is it because of uh, managerial efficiency? It's more efficient to manage that. There's something about a unit and an, a perceived sense of an ideal size and an idea about personal attention well, right. well, from I'll a continue my In whose eyes is it like an ideal size, 12, 14? Who decided that? I don't know. It, it seems to be a structure. The way it's been and the way yeah. it shall be. And But that's not true. You're well, saying the way that it's been, the sizes used to vary a lot. Yeah. And there used to be units of three people. Huh? Would there have been units of three people? There might have been. Was there a viability cutoff in the past? Where if, if no, there, there might be but no units with three or four, but yeah. they, they weren't there the next year. Yeah. The tutors yeah. weren't there the next year. No. I mean, there's probably an idea that you need some, like in a seminar, it's, it's not an endless spectrum. The room yeah. starts to fill, you're like eight, nine, ten people, nice, okay, we're going to have a discussion. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oh, it's going to be a little tight. Fifteen tips, it, it doesn't feel like a seminar. Yeah. I mean, there's just... So many humans around a table for two hours where you, the numbers we begin to gel and not gel. Maybe that's not so true of a unit and it's dynamic, but you, you feel it in a seminar. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if it's no, just, just managing the unit that is w willing to um, experiment in, with, with regard to this, that it might become more of a mixture so that you could have a highly intense unit like uh, Pierre's this, with, with very focused intentions, very clear kind of manifesto. Then you could have other units which are, which is maybe much larger or much smaller. I don't know. But the, theoretically the VA the could take advantage of its freedom, couldn't it? Yeah, to, not hardly. Um, yeah. It would be interesting to watch because then people, how they would make decisions. I mean, I was fascinated to watch this first round of seeing how people sort themselves into units, what they nominate as their first choice, the false second choice, etc. Mm -hmm. And understanding that there's this whole algorithmic madness behind it. What's the false second choice? Did you oh, I didn't know about this. Oh, go on. You, if you're... I'm not sure I know about either. <laughs> well, you tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so, I want to win in a unit, I want the most popular unit. That's probably statistically not going to happen because they're capped at 12 or 13 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I put my real first choice, not first. I kind of have to forget it. So then I take my second choice, which is a unit not as popular, that becomes my first choice. And because there's going to still be a run on that one, the second choice I'll not be able to attend, or the second choice is because of the, the inrush of students toward them will knock me out of any interview possibility that that second line is a no-go. Therefore, the emphasis is now on the third. And a student coming in on that new wouldn't know that. They would just you know, think, my heart says one, two, three, and then they'll find out that they should have played it a slightly different way. I Hedging think, their bets. I think, <laughs> I, I think I'm stuck there because I came in third year only, so it's my second time around, and I just cannot deal with that, I think. It's just hard. It's, it's like, this is what I want, this is what I want second, this is... And then you see, like, you're faced with a list that you realise your second interview is, like, on Thursday evening. But you could argue, if... I would think that if I'm paying £20,000, I want what I've paid for. That's why I've come to the diploma school to be yeah. with Pierre. Yeah. If I'm, and that's why I'm paying 20 grand for. If I can't get it, I'll, I'll piss off, go somewhere. If it's a proper consumerist uh, market oriented yeah. system, then that's its logic, isn't it? No, and it's kind of, it's kind of hard to avoid with the feeds as they are. 
mm. you can't, like in my old university in Stockholm where education is free, you could kind of potentially experiment with an idea that you're completely, actually yes. in undergrad you're completely, um, there's a lottery and you just yes. end up with whoever, to, based on yes. a pure algorithm and yes. it's fine in that, in that structure because yes. Yes, I, I know that the MA at the bar was like that, was like that. Mm. You uh, you didn't have a choice of tutor. Mm. The, the, the school, the the course used to run a, a short project without a monitor line. Everybody pins up, and then the tutors just see different students and try to distribute talent and that. If if you got into the American system of sorting studios, it's even more mm, social engineering. So the the so the studios would all be the same size. You do get to kind of fill out my first, second, third choice, but then it's put into a weird sort of back room, and out come studios, all of uniform size, all have an average, grade point average the same, so mm -hmm. that the talent is distributed yes. in an academic sense, all with um, gender parity, mm -hmm. and in some cases, all with socioeconomic background averages. Mm -hmm where that's applicable. So you have I can understand that. assumptions it's a, it's about... a logical system, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Or I guess you have the Swiss system where you have to suck up to a tutor beforehand and be their sort of semi-assistant slash best friend and then you get... That goes on here too, mm. and vice versa, Yeah, yeah, mm. naturally. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've just heard from like people coming on an exchange program, for example, that they just stand no chance of ever getting into like I don't know if it was a couple of years ago Zoom or whatever it was. But like, you see, I don't think it's ever going to change. We we'll have conversations like this, you know. What does it say here? Soyez realiste, demand l'impossible, demand realism is to demand the impossible. Won't happen. Will it? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you who say... Will, who will make it happen? Who is the person here who will make... No, they, they won't look there. Well, actually, we've got three students here who've come on their own um, choice to a, a, a totally open-ended project. Lawn will, it's only as good as you, you people can make it. We can only sort of try to set up uh, opportunities or help you. So, should we invade PBA? <laughs> <laughs> David Green will give him a really good lecture on Ungus. <laughs> With interruptions by Mark Morris <laughs> and various accidents performed by Stage identification. Yes, various accidents. Yeah. I learned that Charles Jenkins.